this video we're going to talk about Beaver Builder and we're going to go through how you would build a page with Beaver Builder. Firstly, if you're choosing Beaver Builder right now, you're wondering what builder to choose. I probably I'd skip over Beaver Builder. I'd go for Gutenberg uh, personally. But if you're sort of stuck with Beaver Builder, uh, this is the video for you to help you um, help you get a bit of an overview sort of knowledge of Beaver Builder. So firstly, a bit of uh, housekeeping here. So in the plugins, I've got Gutenberg, disable Gutenberg, activated. So that's going to disable Gutenberg for us. And then I've got the, the Beaver Builder plugin, uh, light plugin activated. Uh, so with the light plugin, I don't have things like save module, save template, you know, all that really cool stuff that you can kind of save components out and reuse them on other pages uh, and save templates and drop that into a, to a page. Uh, so we don't have those features. We'll, we'll, we'll dance over them a little bit. Uh, to give you a flavor for, for it, but I, I am stuck with the light version here. Let's create a new page. And we can call this anything. And we'll go Beaver Builder. So we go to the Beaver Builder tab and that automatically has launched Beaver Builder now. So we're in Beaver Builder. And Beaver Builder is a layer on top of WordPress, a layer of, of abstraction. To get out of Beaver Builder, we go into WordPress admin here and we can go into the current page or we can go to the dashboard. So I'll just go edit page to break back out of Beaver Builder. So now I'm back in WordPress with the default tiny MCE editor. Launching Beaver Builder again. Okay, here we are, Beaver Builder. So this is the main start, uh, the main sort of start button for, for Beaver Builder. This is gonna give you access to columns modules which is content so another word for modules would be a content module text editor and if you've got the premium version then you'll see a lot more modules here as well so to drag the rows uh, click and drag uh, it sort of disappears for a while which can be can almost look like a bug but then you just move the cursor while still holding down the click button and you'll see what, that we actually do have an object there and and the position of where you drop it is very important uh, because that's where it's going to go uh, so now that we have this sort of structure here um, we can remove if we don't want or the idea is that we drag content in these modules in these uh, sort of cells I call them cells or boxes so we go over to modules and then we just grab a text ad text editor module throw that in there uh, and this is where the content would go uh, and if you want you can full screen that uh, there's also other properties on this module so we can change the font, uh, the style, text shadow, uh, and then in advanced, we've got some spacing properties and visibility and animation. Uh, and it gets a bit more sophisticated here with the HTML element as well. So that's, they're the basic properties just on the, uh, on the text element. Uh, what other modules do we have in the free version here? We've got audio, photo, video, and HTML code. So we can drag a photo over there. And if 
we select a photo and it'll take us to our media library um, in which we can upload a media image if we need and pop that in uh, then or then we've got things like widths so we can adjust the widths to be whatever we want so if we're not happy with a 50 50 sort of two column scenario we want to we want that slightly more obscured uh, slight, slightly more weighted to the to the left for the content and have a smaller image we can just drag this module here uh, what I when I'm looking at this what the first thing I see is wow we're really cramped in here why can't we just make this uh, bounding area larger so for that um, I'd be looking in the spanner here to see what sort of properties we have. So the spanner obviously represents um, settings, settings that we can adjust. Uh, so let's go maybe full width. So I don't think my theme is gonna support that, but so, and the maximum width that my theme, which is a, the default WordPress theme is supporting here is is 1100 pixels wide, which isn't that wide. This error is, I mean, this restricted width here that we're experiencing is a direct result of my theme that I'm using. Uh, this is the default 2020 WordPress theme, uh, and it's really designed to work with Gutenberg. Uh, and what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing entry content, which is this div here, uh, and any and the direct child of the um, entry content div, which is this one here, is going to be set to uh, 58 rem, which is what's causing me this. If I turn that off, then I get uh, I get the expected. 1100 max width there we are so that's what's happening there so for the point of this demonstration we'll just continue on launching beaver builder again so i've put in a little image here and so we're editing so we can remove the rows here just click the cross and we, we start removing elements we can also du uh, duplicate elements here. So just by clicking this icon here, we can duplicate. Oop, that duplicated the inner element there. And now I will remove it. Uh, let's click the content to bring up the content properties. And you'll notice this button here, this little monitor icon actually represents uh, responsive editing so we can access uh, tablet and mobile views from from uh, clicking this little icon here which is cool <clears throat> when you first load up beaver builder I've noticed a lot of people are a bit confused they roll over one element and they get this box pop up and it's blue and then you roll over another element and you get another blue box pop up and the other one turns gray and they're like, well, what does that mean? Uh, Cause that's kind of confusing. Uh, and I've realized that the colors, colors can be described like this. So blue is the hover color. So when you're hovering over something, it'll be blue. And the gray colors represent the parent of the object that you're hovering over. So that's all the colors mean. Also, one of the gotchas that I experienced with Beaver Builder was uh, setting background colors. Um, so, and it was because I found this icon here to be, I don't know, I just couldn't, wouldn't expect to see edit columns. There's column settings in here. Uh, so, and this icon just does not say that to me i'd expect it to be a 
a wheel or something, you know, this the cog wheel or something like that. But anyway, in you've got column settings in here, which are, are pretty. Here's we can adjust more widths. Uh, if we go down further, we can set the color of text. We can also set background colors. Not even going to go into the gradient. Uh, I don't know why. So color, color. So I should have a color property here. Okay, there it is. There. It's kind of just a bit kind of confusing. Um, the interface is not what I'd enjoy interacting with on a daily basis. Uh, but the, yeah some really important settings sort of hidden away in uh, this icon here. So I mentioned before, one of the best features of Beaver Builder is actually with the premium version of Beaver Builder. And say for instance, if we were to want to save this module here uh, to be reused uh, on another page, there would there in the premium version there is a save as button here which are, which allows you to save this as a reusable module so that way you don't have to rebuild it uh, every time you want to add it to a new page so that's a really handy feature and you'll be able to add it to your page from a section in here uh, templates or modules there'll be something something down here called save modules which you can access quite easily and add to the page. So, I mean, if you are going to go down the Beaver Builder road, I, I definitely recommend getting the premium version for the, for the ability to save whole page templates and for the saved modules as well. Also, just wanted to add in uh, with Gutenberg, you can save reusable blocks uh, natively. Uh, there, there's no premium version of Gutenberg. It's it pretty much built into WordPress. So I'd choose Gutenberg over Beaver Builder any day of the week uh, because it's made by the it's made by WordPress. It's always going to run smoother and better than Beaver Builder. Uh, I've seen uh, the clients that we work for uh, love. Gutenberg uh, and they find it really intuitive with Beaver Builder uh, I've seen some clients that have gotten really confused uh, just based on the look of Beaver Builder and the uh, the usability of it